This is Kenneth Turan. I'm a film critic for the Los Angeles Times, and we're here with Jahan Nujem to talk about her exceptional, her exceptional new documentary, The Square. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, you have a, tell me about your, before we get to the film itself, your connection with Egypt. I grew up about 10 minutes away from the square. Um, my family still lives there, and I'm Egyptian. So there was no place that I wanted to be more than in the middle of the square as, this, uh, as the protest movement was happening. You immediately thought of this as something you wanted to film as? Yeah, I had made a film in 2007 where we, o where we thought things might erupt, about three women fighting for democratic change in the country. Um, and uh, the film came out. It was called Egypt, We're Watching You. Um, it came out on television, BBC. Um, and, uh, and so when I heard the rumblings were going about a, a protest movement happening uh, on the 25th of January, Tunisia had erupted already, and um, there was a Facebook page called We Are All Khalid Said, um, focused on a young man that had been tortured and killed in prison. And so there was a massive movement of people that were going to be hitting the streets. So the question was whether I wanted to be there or go to Davos, where I'd been invited, and where a lot of the leadership of the country was going to be. Um, so I ended up going to Davos, got there, none of the leadership showed up, so I tried to get back as quickly as I could. Arrived in the airport and was arrested about 20 minutes after arrival. Right. Um, the military had already come down to the streets and military intelligence searched my car and found the previous film in my luggage. Wow. Egypt, we're watching you is not the title of a film you want found by military intelligence as the country is exploding. So I went in to be questioned. I tried to destroy the DVDs by shoving them down a drain. And DVDs are hard to crack apart if you've ever tried. I've tried, actually. You have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not easy. It's difficult. Yeah. So, you know, tried to shove them down a drain, went back into the interrogation room, and about five minutes later, the guy cleaning the bathroom walks in oh my God. with a shard of the <laughs> DVD in his hand, you know. And I just was kind of like, okay. I made a film, it was a film that I thought was a very patriotic film about women trying to change the country, exactly what people in the square are doing right mm -hmm. now. And ultimately they let me go. And I think it a, f a fear broke at that moment where I just said, I'm just gonna talk about how I feel no matter what the consequences. Wow. And it's a small piece of, I think, what everybody who went to that square felt. I'm going to basically say what I want to, decide that I'm going to fight for the future of a country because I don't want to have kids in this country. I don't yeah. feel like this is a country I want to raise children in. That's how people felt. And it was this incredibly beautiful atmosphere when I got there. Men, women, different classes, religious, secular, all, cha all fighting for the change that they wanted to see in their country. Yeah. One of the really exceptional things about the film is the people you have found, the people that we follow. And I wonder how did you know, how did you meet them? You know, I'm the film gods. Really? I mean, did you just literally bump into them on the square? We were literally sleeping next to each other really? in tents. I mean, that's how we met everybody who was in the film. That's how the entire crew came together. There was wow. no pre-production. Everybody was there in the square first, and I met my DP, I met the producer who was setting up a stage in the square. So oh we God. all kind yeah. of came together in a very organic way. Millions of Egyptians came down to the streets in nationwide protest. This uprising defies any definitions. People are gathering in the largest demonstrations against President Hosni Mubarak. Harari Sayyid al Rais Muhammad Hosni Mubarak, with the Khali and Mansib Rais al Gumuria. خليني أحكي لك القصة تادت إزاي تادت لما شوية شباب جدعان عشان يحاربوا الظلم والفساد والفقر فدان التحرير أنا قابلت مجد عشور في الميدان مجد عشور هو أحد أعضاء الإخوان المسلمين أنت في يوم الأيام أتوقع أن نقف في الدان التحرير متضامنين كلنا مع بعض كان بالنسبة تبقى صعبة لو آخر نقطة دم تلعت مننا فوز مسلحة we did all of this in order just to remove him and put someone exactly like him in his place. 
لان هي طبعا حكايتنا محدش بيحكيها غير غيرنا احنا يقول لي ده في حرب في الميدان دي مش صورة لا The army has killed us, has tortured us and the people out there know that عاملين زي صفقة مع الجيش هو السيد محمد مرسي عيسى العياط عارف يا رمضان دي؟ أنا بحبك لكن بكره جماعة الإخوان المسلمين في حق الإخوان يقفوا مع المجلس العسكري، المجلس العسكري اللي قتل شعبه، خدوا الميدان واعملوا اللي أنتوا عايزينه والثورة جاية غصب على أي حد <laughs> these, these people are very different. Actually, the, the, key, the three key ones, why don't you describe the three key people you know who I'm thinking about? Well, you, you look for people that you want to lead you through this story because if it's an unfunded film and you're going to be shooting it for I don't know how long and you don't know if it'll ever get out there, you'd better be spending time with people you yeah. like. And Ahmed is one of the people, the main character yes. um, of the film. And I fell in love with him when I met him. Yeah. Um, he has a joyfulness and a hope and um, for change that, that just leaps, off, leaps out at you. And um, he was somebody who we felt had this beautiful, um, in incredible emotional t intelligence. Um, he's incredibly charismatic. He's somebody that you just wa you want to spend time with. Um, and he's also representative of what many of the younger generation felt that he had he he grew up um, with a you know a woman uh, his mother was um, uneducated illiterate uh, his father died when he was young he's been educated his mother felt it was very important for him to go to school so he had had two years of journalism schooling wow. but um, what was never able to get a job there was no opportunity there but had done every other you know random job yeah. in the book like been a cook and you know different things um, and he just went to the square frustrated because of living in a country with just no future no yeah. opportunity yeah. where the social contract with the government had been broken and I really felt like we were making a film that was hitting on the zeitgeist of the time. There's a reason why there's this ex these explosions and taking over of squares around yeah. the world. This isn't only about Egypt. This is about a youth movement and a desire to, to change the social contract with the government. Yeah. And Magdi, I think, you know, for many Western viewers, so to see someone like him be so candid, tell us about him. So Magdi was, um, his sort of tent was literally right next door to ours wow. um, and we met him I first met him in the square and then he got into these fascinating discussions with Pierre who is a Coptic Christian guy um, who has the apartment overlooking the square right, right. and he would get into these fascinating discussions about the future of the country people from vastly different backgrounds speaking to each other for the first yeah. time yeah, tell us about his background. So, uh, Magdi was with the Muslim Brotherhood for 25 years. Um, you know, he, uh, a loyal member of the Brotherhood, went down to the streets, um, basically, as like everybody did, wanting to have a change in the country. Um, and But he's a very interesting, probably one of the most fascinating characters in the film because he's faced with major conflict as he becomes close to the secular... Um, friends that he makes in the square and actually as the brotherhood comes to power he starts questioning their motives and starts questioning the brotherhood as an entity and that's what's fascinating about revolution is that it just it, it caused everybody to start question, questioning the hierarchy that they were a part of so yeah. you saw once the brotherhood was actually out in the open the youth of the brotherhood began actually questioning the whole structure of the yeah. brotherhood yeah. once they're not underground anymore they become a power that's held accountable in the same way that any other leader is held accountable. Yeah, yeah. So they become, you know, well, this guy is just a corrupt politician just like everybody else. They're just using religion. Yeah. So it was a fascinating story yeah. to watch with Magdi. Yeah, now, your film has a trajectory that I think is, I can't think of a similar trajectory with any other documentary. You finished the film. Not only did you finish it, you got into Sundance, which is an accomplishment. Then you doubled that accomplishment. You won the Audience Award, which is very prestigious. This would be enough for most film directors. Yet you redid the film. How did you come to that idea and talk about what that was like? 
Um, I'm not sure I would recommend this as a process <laughs> for <laughs> other filmmakers. Um, but we, the first sort of trajectory of the film, the film that we showed at Sundance, was basically the political um, tra trajectory from the bringing down of a dictator to the election of a new president. But actually, two weeks before we left for Sundance, when we'd gone through, you know, we had closed the film, all of our characters were back in the streets because you had, once again, you had somebody using the tools of democracy to create another dictatorship. Yeah. And it became a story about the fight against fascism, whether the, fa the face of that fascism was Mubarak or the military or the Muslim Brotherhood. It became a bigger story about people holding their government accountable and their leadership yeah. accountable. And so we decided, um, as we were going to Sundance, we had a team that was continuing to film. Wow. We were we headed back there literally, you know, right afterwards and filmed for a whole other year um, wow. and re-edited the film um, and yes. then launched in Toronto. And it's quite different. How d how different would you say it is? No, it's it's very different. Um, I mean, some people have. I mean, I, it's hard to qualify, but it's basically. You know, we have a whole other year of filming. Yeah. Um, there's stylistically, it's different um, because we found actually that uh, we wanted it to be led by one character rather than all of the characters, yeah. which is what was in the Sundance cut. Um, and uh, so it's led by Ahmed's voice. Yes. Because um, I think that it's hard to, you know, capturing a people's movement is it's it's con it's confusing a lot of times yeah, and yeah. you're often in moments when you're not exactly sure what's happening and you do need somebody's emotional experience to yes. take you somebody's along. through line that you can you can follow along mm -hmm. with yeah yeah no that was fascinating it was so really fascinating to, to see that you. happen uh, well i mean the major difference is that basically the f the one sh the, the cut showed at sun shown at sundance showed the struggle of the revolutionaries yeah against the military and basically what we filmed was then the struggle of the revolutionaries against uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah. So it became you know, about the betrayal of both the army and the Brotherhood. Yeah. Yeah. Are you done with this story? <laughs> yes, the film is finished. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, stuff is, might happen. Yeah, no, but we're not, you know, we're yeah. not a news station. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but, but at the same time, I mean, we had to get to a point where we felt like the emotional journey of the characters had yeah. gone through a cycle. Um, yeah. And they all came to a place where they realized that it wasn't about the particular leader in power, but it was about the changing of a consciousness in the country, and it's about yeah. holding leaders accountable. Um, and so we've locked the film. I won't come out with another in two <laughs> months that I'll ask you to <laughs> review. <laughs> you know? um, so this is the film that I think stands on its feet for 50 years, 100 years from now. But the hope is is that, um, I mean, with all of these new distribution methods and with, you know, our Facebook and, and, and our, our, um, our internet site, we can be uploading um, content because people are very uh, curious. I mean, okay. this is about, this is, this story is changing, you know, as we speak. Our characters are still very much in the midst of it. And you're in touch with them? You know what they We're in to touch with them all the time. There's people filming on the ground wow. now for, for additional pieces. And so it's kind of this, it's, inc it's incredible to be part of this process. I mean, I'm very humbled and excited about it because we're releasing a film that can actually have an effect of, on what's happening on the ground now. Yeah. We're arranging a screening for the people that are writing the Constitution. Wow. Um, you know, so it's, it's that kind of, you know, in the moment, this film is giving a, a, a view to people of everything that we've been through. And every country that has been through such massive change, yeah. I mean, look at South Africa, right? We had the Truth and Reconciliation Committee yeah. that happened, yeah. right? It's so important for people to be able to look back on both the positives and the mistakes in yeah. order to learn from them and, and to be able on. to move yeah. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Can the film be seen in Egypt? I mean, is this, are you working on that? We're working on that. We submitted it to censorship. Don't ask me why we still have censorship <laughs> after a revolution. We shouldn't yeah. be, but we still have censorship. Um, we uh, submitted it two months ago. We need an official letter in order for it to be released in theaters. We have not been given that official letter yet. Yeah. Um, so we are we are still working on that, but currently we cannot show it to, to the yeah. public in Egypt. But I have to say that the kinds of 
articles that have come out and being shortlisted and the tweets that people are sending to yeah. people in Cairo as they watch the yeah. film is been incredible because it's given the film a kind of support and um, that, that you know will make it very difficult to, to censor in Egypt. Yeah. You know, I have kind of a, just a, a two-prong question just on a political level. I mean, A, did it have to end in this kind of, not the film, but the situation in Egypt seems not to have ended so far in an ideal way. Did it have to be that way? And how hopeful are you for the future? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, this film is about, not only about, you know, bat as Khaled beautifully says in the yeah. film, this film, this, this story is not about just a battle of rocks and stones. This story is about a battle of narratives. Um, and what this film does is shows the narrative of people that were really struggling for, uh, of many different backgrounds, s struggling for human rights and social justice and freedom of expression. And it's a fight that still continues today. And I am given, I, I have hope because of the people that we followed and the staying power that this movement has. Yeah. Um, and what I'm very um, excited about with the release of this film is that it gives this narrative a platform. Um, you know, when Ahmed, when we called Ahmed up, who's the main character yeah, yeah. in the film, and we told him that the film had, you know, made the short list. <laughs> he was like, I don't know what to say. This means that our story can never be ignored. Oh, this means that yeah. it cannot be wiped out. Our narrative will always be there. Yeah. And so that was just, I mean, it that's just great. made me no, so yeah. happy yeah. When, when, when he said that. And so, you know, I, I do have hope for the country. It's a long struggle. Um, it continues. But if you look at any movement, you look at the civil rights movement, right? Not all of the laws were put into place right away, right, with the civil rights movement, but a kind of consciousness changed. And yeah, there's a consciousness yeah. change that is happening in Egypt. We will never go back to where we were three years ago. And there's a, there's a, gener a generation shift. I mean, there's some, I don't know the exact number, but um, the majority of the population is under the age of 40. So with all of this change being in the news and new constitution being written, we're in this founding period and there's going to be a new generation that, that yeah. takes over the country. And that's my hope for the deep change that's going to happen. That would be great. Do you have another project? Or is it too early for you to think <laughs> about another project? Always. Um, no, uh, we're, I'm actually writing something right now. Um, and I, we also have filmed 1,600 hours worth of footage really? over the last three years. Wow. Um, we also filmed inside the first presidential election, so inside the office of Morsi and the sort of army-ish candidate yeah. and, the, um, and the secular candidate. And so it was kind of this incredible, it's, it's going to be this political film that we're working on, which wow. is kind of exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you. Do you have a website you want to tell people about? Yes, um, if you want to hear about more about the film and um, where it can be screened, uh, go to thesquarefilm.com and also on Facebook, The Square Film, and we have a Twitter handle, The Square Film, as well. Okay, well, Jane, thank you, and thank you, thank you for watching. This is Kenneth Ram, Los Angeles Times. Thank you. Jane Najim. Thank you. Director of The Square. Thank you.